In August 1947, the Indian subcontinent was partitioned into the independent states of India and Pakistan. Extreme violence occurred before and during partition, which led to strained relations between the two new countries. Then in October 1947, just two months after partition, war broke out between them over Kashmir. Both sides won territory, but Pakistan, deeming that the whole of Kashmir was rightfully its own, incited outbreak of another war in 1965, which ended in a stalemate. Another regional complication occurred when in 1962, India and China fought a short border war, leading to strained relations between them. But in 1963, relations between Pakistan and China greatly improved after they signed the border treaty. In Pakistan, Wichat independence had been formed in two wings, East Pakistan and West Pakistan, separated by 1,000 miles of the width of India, encountered difficulty administering the two discontinuous territories. Political power and financial decisions were centered in the western wing, generating frustration and resentment in the more populated eastern wing. Over time, east-west relations deteriorated. Pakistan's 1965 war with India was particularly distressful to Bengalis, who populated the east, as Pakistan's military resources were concentrated in the west, leaving the lightly defended eastern wing vulnerable to attack. Then in general elections held in December 1970, the leading East Pakistani party won the most seats in parliament, which would allow it to take control of the national government. But some West Pakistani politicians resisted, and the crisis developed. By March 1971, East Pakistan was seething with rebellion. On March 25, 1971, the Pakistani military launched an anti dissident campaign in East Pakistan, which inflicted a heavy loss of lives and forced millions of East Pakistanis to flee into neighboring India. Bengalis then rose up in armed rebellion and formed Mukti Bahini, a guerrilla militia. Bengali leaders also declared secession, proclaiming East Pakistan as the independent state of Bangladesh. East Pakistani refugees flooding into India caused a severe strain on Indian resources. And as nearly 50% of the refugees were Hindus, to the Indian government, the unrest in East Pakistan was religious as well as political. India then decided to become militarily involved and also for strategic reasons. That is, the secession of East Pakistan would eliminate the threat of India having to face a war on two fronts. On March 27, 1971, India announced its support for Bangladesh's independence and began to covertly train and arm the Bangladeshi militias. In May 1971, India prepared to invade East Pakistan, but moved the offensive to later in the year during the dry season and also when the snow-covered Himalayan passes would prevent a possible Chinese attack. Also for the latter reason, India signed a treaty with the Soviet Union. Several months of mounting tensions, war rhetoric, and border military buildup led in October 1971 to air and medium-scale ground fighting between Indian and Pakistani forces near the border of East Pakistan. On December 3, 1971, full-scale war broke out when Pakistani planes launched airstrikes in India and the Indian Air Force retaliated with aerial strikes in Pakistan. Military planners on both sides were aware that the UN would likely quickly intervene to press for an end to the war, just as had happened in their previous two wars. Thus, both planned for a short war before the UN intervened. For India, its strategy was to mass military resources for a quick victory in East Pakistan, and for Pakistan to capture as much Indian territory in the West with which to bargain under UN mediation against territorial losses in East Pakistan. At sea, the much larger Indian Navy attacked Karachi, first on December 5th, sinking two Pakistani warships and crippling another, as well as many other commercial ships, and then on December 9th, sinking Pakistani and foreign merchant ships. In the air, both sides conducted raids on the other's military installations, although Indian planes launched much more attacks as the war progressed. Pakistani operations were greatly hampered by the defection of Bengali technical personnel. 
On land, fighting took place as in those in the 1965 war, the highly volatile regions of Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab and Sindh Rajasthan. In northern Kashmir, battles took place in many areas. Indian forces captured Turtuk and the surrounding mountains. In Punch, a Pakistani offensive was beaten back. Indian forces then counter-attacked but failed to achieve a decisive victory. In the Jammu sector, Pakistani forces captured several villages in Cham, but the slow advance of their armor and infantry and failure to concentrate tank and artillery fire allowed Indian forces to regroup and reinforce and stop the Pakistani offensive. Indian forces then counter-attacked, recapturing some territory, but their offensive soon also stalled. Further south, the Sharkargar salient became the scene of the biggest tank battle of the war. The area was strategic as a Pakistani offensive could cut off Indian-held Jammu and Kashmir from India. Preempting this, on December 5th, Indian forces launched an attack, advancing along three axes. But the Indians moved only cautiously, wary of minefields and concealed enemy armored and artillery units. Major encounters saw some 45 Pakistani and 15 Indian tanks destroyed. By the time of the ceasefire on December 16th, Indian units had come to within Zafarwal and Shakargar. In the Punjab, on December 3rd, Pakistani forces attacked Husainiwala, forcing the retreating Indian units to destroy the bridge to Ferozepur to prevent the town's capture. Further north, Indian forces captured the Sedra salient in a preemptive move to eliminate the threat to Kem Karan and Harike. In the Sindh Rajasthan sector, on December 4, 1971, a Pakistani armored advance into the Thar Desert was decisively stopped at Longewala, with Indian planes destroying 36 tanks and hundreds of light vehicles. The Pakistani objective here was to capture as much territory which could be used in an anticipated UN arbitration against those that would be lost in East Pakistan. As well, the offensive may have been made to preempt an Indian attack on Rahim Yar Khan, a vital rail, road and communication link between Sindh and the Punjab. After stopping the Pakistani offensive on Longawala, Indian forces counter-attacked, capturing a number of Pakistani border areas. Opposing forces in the western sector were much more evenly matched, and neither side inflicted enough attrition to cripple the enemy's war potential. Both sides also allocated a greater portion of their military resources to the west, but these were not fully utilized in battle. Both sides also made inflated claims of combat successes during the war, which independent sources could not substantiate. The difficult topography of East Pakistan, consisting of four major river systems and thousands of small tributaries, was thought by India to be a great obstacle to achieving a quick victory. The Indian army merely hoped to win as much territory as possible and then allow the Bangladeshis to establish their government in captured territory. Unlike in the western sector, fighting in the east was decisive. In the air, Indian planes took control of the sky, while at sea, the Indian Navy implemented a blockade of the Bay of Bengal and carrier-based aircraft attacked coastal areas. On December 4, 1971, Indian forces consisting of 200,000 troops backed by air, artillery, and armored units and their Bangladeshi allies attacked on four fronts. The offensives bypassed strong Pakistani defenses near the border and pressed for the capital, Dhaka, the main objective. The advances were greatly facilitated by the civilian population, which provided information on local terrain and Pakistani positions. By December 12, Indian Bangladeshi units had reached the perimeter of the capital. On December 16, the Pakistani government gave instructions to the East Pakistan Command to take measures to end the fighting. The Pakistanis requested a ceasefire, which was refused. Indian forces prepared to lay siege to the city and then issued an ultimatum, forcing the Pakistani commander to relent and agree to surrender. Over 90,000 Pakistani military and civilian personnel were taken prisoner. As much fighting occurred on the diplomatic front as on the battlefield. On December 5, 1971, at the UN, the Soviet Union vetoed a proposal tabled by the United States and supported by China calling on India and Pakistan for a ceasefire and withdrawal of forces. Britain and France abstained, foreseeing the Soviet veto. 
Two days later, on December 7th, the UN General Assembly approved a resolution urging India and Pakistan to end the fighting. But the Soviets voting down the Security Council resolution blunted UN efforts to pressure India to end the war. The Soviet Union also massed forces at the Chinese border, which deterred China from becoming directly involved in the war. Furthermore, at the request of the Indian government, the Soviets sent a naval flotilla to the Bay of Bengal, which tailed a U.S. fleet that had just arrived in the area. The Indian-Soviet Treaty had been signed in August 1971. But to show India's continued neutrality in the ongoing Cold War, in October, Premier Indira Gandhi embarked on a visit to many Western countries. With the collapse of the eastern sector, fighting in the west also ended. Pakistani authorities released Mujimur Rahman, the Bengali leader, who returned to Bangladesh on January 10, 1972. In September 1974, Bangladesh became a full member of the United Nations. 